Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to the miraculous Kaaba. Why do Muslims pray towards the Kaaba? By rational believer. Guys, lately I've been learning more and more about the Kaaba and I have to say that I'm absolutely fascinated by that subject. Of course, the atheists and anti-Islamists will claim that the Kaaba is just a pagan worship place. It has nothing to do with Abraham. But the Muslim claim is, of course, that this house has been built by Abraham and his son. Why, however, Muslims have to pray into the direction of the Kaaba, I do not know. And therefore, I'm looking forward to find out in today's video. With no further ado, let's have a look. From any point in the world, the direction facing the Kaaba is called Qibla, and Muslims are expected to face Kaaba while performing Salah. For most of the people who don't know the wisdom behind the Holy Kaaba, it seems like Muslims are worshipping this cubic black house. That exactly, that's what I mentioned in the beginning. Atheists or anti-Islamists, they will claim that they're just worshipping some sort of pagan statue, some sort of pagan black box. That's why many of them ask the question, why a Muslim should prostrate towards a rocky house like the Hindus who are worshipping idols? Now, right. what is the difference between Islam and other religions in this regard? In Islam, there is a rule that if someone does not know the direction of Qibla or he has no possibilities to verify it, then he can... It's just my personal perspective, my personal experience. I'm not an Islamic scholar nor a Christian scholar. But what do you think when you hear, so wherever you might turn, there is the face of Allah? Is that not an omnipresence of Allah? Is that not an omnipresence of God? That no matter where you turn, he's actually there. How would you interpret that Islamically? Coming from a Christian background and moreover, having ventured into the New Age spirituality, etc., etc., I came to the conclusion that God is all-encompassing and God is essentially everywhere. Not in the sense of that God is the creation, that would be of course pantheism, but much more from a monistic perspective where God is the only thing that is real, the only true reality that is underlaying everything else. Everything else we see is temporary and will die at some point, will perish at some point. So therefore there is nothing real but God and hence there would be nothing else but the face of God. This is my own interpretation, so please let me know in the comment section what you think about it. From this verse we can understand that the meaning of prostrating towards Kaaba is only to be united. Otherwise, everywhere is belonging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. No Muslim ever worships the Kaaba when you offer salah. Kaaba is the Qibla. It is the direction. We Muslims, we believe in unity. Now when we offer salah, suppose you want to offer salah here. Some will say, let's face north. Some will say south. Some will say east. Some will say west. For unity, Allah says in the Quran Surah Baqarah, that wherever you are, face towards the Kaaba. So Kaaba is the Qibla, it is the direction. So we are facing in that direction, but no one worships the Kaaba. Furthermore, if yet you have doubts, if you read the Hadith that's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 2, in the book of Hajj, chapter 56, Hadith number 675, 
Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, near the second caliph of Islam, second khalifa. He said that this black stone pointing at Haji Aswat, black stone, it can neither benefit me, it can neither harm me. Just because my Prophet kissed it, I'm kissing it. This statement that this black stone can neither harm anyone nor benefit anyone is sufficient to prove that the Muslim don't worship the Kaaba. Furthermore, at the time of the Prophet... I have to interrupt here. I wouldn't know how this is proof necessarily. This is something that a Buddhist monk can say as well about a golden Buddha statue. He could say it doesn't benefit me nor does it harm me and therefore we have proof that it is correct. So I don't find this a good argument. There were Sahabas, there were companions of the Prophet who stood on the Kaaba and gave the Azan. No idol worshipper will ever stand on the Kaaba and give the Azan. Proving that no Muslim ever worshipped the Kaaba, it's only the Qibla, it's a direction. Not only Salah. But why do you kiss it then? That's an honest question, I really want to know. Towards the Kaaba, rather the circumambulation is also a sign of unity. If you look to the creation, from the tiny world of quantum to the huge celestial bodies in the universe, from the very atom to the biggest stars and planets, they are all rotating and circumambulating around a certain axis in a counterclockwise direction. And this is exactly what the Muslims are doing around the Kaaba. So in Islam, it's an act of worship. It means in nature, everything is worshiping the Almighty Creator, but not the body which yep, is in the center of... Absolutely powerful. I used to practice Falun Dafa, and now I'm not saying that Falun Dafa is the way, but within Falun Dafa, which is essentially a Qigong practice that comes from China, you are mimicking the spinning of the cosmos. And this is what I got reminded of when I saw the people spinning around the Kaaba. Essentially, the representation, the manifestation of everything being in motion within this universe. Very, very beautiful. The circumambulation. This represents the unity in the whole creation. Right. Beside the logical fact, there's a scientific reasoning about the Kaaba. When a person puts his head on the ground towards the Kaaba, the harmful charges would be released out of his body in a perfect manner, and it causes the body to balance its energy system. To know how it works, first you should know about the concept of the golden ratio. The golden ratio is a proportion of a longer distance to a shorter one, which is equal to phi constant, 1.618. This ratio is also called a divine proportion, because the Almighty Creator has used the very same proportion in a great number of events. This we already saw in a previous video. It's beautiful. I always have to think about atheists. Sorry guys, I have to repeat myself. But if you are so scientific, if you are an atheist and you see such geometry, such symmetry, isn't this obvious proof to you that there is a creator behind this creation? I really don't understand people that can go throughout their life looking at those numbers, analyzing them even, and then saying, it's all random. How? How does that work? I can't fathom. Look at those patterns, random, randomly symmetrical like this, right? Coincidence? Yes. <laughs> How? Wow, man. I've seen it before, but it's still so beautiful to watch. The golden mean in itself is an evidence of creation. If we apply this ratio on Earth, 
we'll find out that the golden point of the globe is the city of Mecca. Whereas the golden point of Mecca is Holy Kaaba. So because it's the golden point of the globe, it is the strongest energetic field on earth. That makes sense. كتبوه في الشبكة العنكبوتية في الإنترنت وخلوه على مدى 21 يوم ثم أخفوه أخفوه لماذا؟ يعني الأمور تتبع يعني مقاصدها مقاصدها يعني يعني إخفاءه دعنا نقول أنه له دلالة مثلا له دلالة كبيرة جدا م. لسبب لأن هذا الـ 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 البيت العتيق يعني هم لما جم ولقوا فيها شعاع لما لقوا هذا الشعاع ابتدوا يركزوا الصورة فوجدوا انه خارج من مكة وبالتركيز وجدوا انه خارج من الكعبة For understanding how the golden mean provides an energetic field you can take the example of the galaxies or plants which emits the energy from the center point to the outer ages just like a nuclear which balances the energy system with the electrons which are rotating around it It means they are taking the negative energies and giving the positive energies for a balancing purpose. وبالتالي عندما تطوف أنت تشحن معلش سبحان الله أيها هذه حقيقة. Now the investigations show that every day our body collects electromagnetic charges from its surrounding, which are harmful for us, and these charges concentrate to the forehead, meaning the frontal lobe of the brain, which causes depression, headache. laziness, mental pressure, and even more dangerous problems. This forehead part of the brain is known as the frontal chakra throughout which the body takes positive and negative energy. It is observed that these harmful charges can be released by putting our head down on the ground. But for a better result, we should put the frontal chakra of our body in a direction towards the strongest energetic field of the earth, meaning the Kaaba. That is Insane. Dr. If this is true, this is really insane. Activity during the prayer. He found some direct impact on several brain locations. The benefits of prayer are incredible. Regular daily prayer helped the frontal lobe from shrinking with age, which is the part of the brain that regulates our speaking, reading, and memory. Therefore, this helps to prevent memory loss in old ages. A perfect form of meditation which brings us to a state of tranquility. هناك بحث أن صخور مكة البازلتية السوداء هي أقدم الصخور الموجودة في العالم هذا كلام حقيقي أقدم الصخور أيوة. وهذا أثبت علميا أثبت علميا وبحث منشور وليس أخذ يعني صخور بازلتية من مكة بازلتية من مكة وشافوا المناطق اللي بتكون لنا الأمر أنه المتحف البريطاني فيه ثلاث شرائح من الحجر الأسود وقالوا هذا الحجر ليس من صخور المجموعة الشمسية آه I would have to look this up, man. The latitude of the coordinates of the wild is 21 degrees and 25 minutes. The first verse that describes Kaaba is the verse 225. Could this mathematic harmony be a simple coincidence? The possibility of numbers depicted in the Quran with order number 114 rising until verse 286 which described the Kaaba for the first time as a chance of one in 100,000 for them to appear next to each other. Surah 2, verse 125. The part of the coordinates after the comma can be described in the form of minutes as well as in ratios of percentages. In order to handle the upcoming objections, when we look at the coordinates of Kaaba by changing them to percentage ratios, we come across the following verse. Surah 2, verse 142. Hence, no matter how we look at it, there is a sign in the verses that point to Kaaba, and this could only be possible with the wisdom of God.
Although there are scientific facts behind every command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the Muslims should obey them without any reasoning. Because there is always a wisdom behind any order of the Creator that people cannot easily unlock the secret. But for us it is important to seek the satisfaction of our own. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely mind-blowing stuff. I have to repeat myself here. All of those facts about the Kaaba I did not know. Of course, I cannot verify just yet. I would have to research if this is really true. For example, the claims about the stones within the Kaaba are the oldest stones on Earth and moreover are not even from our solar system. I cannot prove this here, so I would have to do my research by myself yet again. Never Nevertheless, hearing all of this is, of course, extremely fascinating and makes me want to go to Mecca. But at the moment, I, of course, cannot go to Mecca. Therefore, I would like to hear from you guys, people that have been to Mecca. What did you experience there? How did it feel for you? I already asked this question previously. I got some answers. I would like to hear some more. How is the energy around the Kaaba? How do you feel when you circle around the Kaaba? Did you had a spiritual experience circling around the Kaaba. Please let me know in the comment section. I would really like to know more about this. All right, guys, but this is it for today. If you like the video, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to further support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.